Well, folks, welcome to One Merdition Politics and Random Better Tolis, your host. Thank you so kindly for being part of the show. We are going to have a great show for you today. Hello, peeps. Lee Grant is in the house. Breach MCP. Beep, beep. In the house. May Wood in the house. AVQ. El Senor Rudnan in the house. And of course, coming in and check in in from ATL. Brother Fleming, how are you doing, sir? Welcome aboard, everybody. Welcome aboard, everybody. How is everybody doing today? Love to see you all here. Anyhow, we are going to have a great show for you today. We are going to have greetings to Alistair Waters. I see Alistair Waters just jumped into the house. How you doing, Alistair? It's hot here in Texas. You got to shave in between takes. Anyhow, it's hot in Texas, folks. We've been over 100 degrees. I don't know how many days. Alistair, how many days have we been over 100 degrees? It's crazy. You know, I just opened the door downstairs, went and got a little something to drink. Mi cafe. It's hot. The door. Open the door. It felt like you went into an oven. Oh, my God. Global warming is real. And how? Michael Rodden says, Egberto, how are you feeling today? I am feeling good. I get all excited for the show. Let me tell you something, guys. And I, I'm not saying, I'm, I'm so honest about this. I can be feeling sort of like, oh, you know, down a little bit. And just coming on, knowing that I'm coming to the show to see my peeps, the energy comes in. I'm there. I feel great right after the show. I get a little bit, uh, and then tired, and then the, the, the original stuff comes down. But you guys energize me, knowing that we are here for a purpose is energizing my green screen is messing with my black coat so therefore we are going to look at that baby and say what's wrong with you today green screen we are going to fix you green screen right this minute and i think we did great mira mi gente vamos a hablar and comenzar con el señor rodnen politico confirming of ohio rape victim Abortion story forces retreat from some conservative doubters. The case has become a microcosm of the fight over abortion rights. Reminder, only it only took three days after Roe was revealed that a 10-year-old child had to travel out of state to get an abortion. This is the sort of horror I'm expecting from Republicans and the Supreme Court until impeachment or unpacking begins. P.S. Don't worry, the right-wing bubble will always find some way to deflect from this story. Some of the alt-right already has details in the article. I won't repeat. It's so sad. It's so sad. It's so sad. But you know what else is amazing, folks? What else is amazing is Texas. The Attorney General of Texas is now suing the Biden administration for saying in a woman has from the FD, from the CDC, a woman has the right to an abortion if, to save her health. And since federal law takes precedence over state law, our great attorney general, a man, says, hey woman, if your health is in trouble, but you are pregnant, you have to kill yourself. You must die. You don't have the options. Ectopic pregnancy, forget it. You're dead. Did you hear how, uh, um, uh, not Rashida Talib, uh, Ayanna Presley really made a, 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 a pro, a, an anti abortion woman look like a clown. She asked her, if this woman has an ectopic pregnancy, the pregnancy develops in her fallopian tubes. And they have to, you know what? She, she realized, it's a woman, she realized how silly she sounds. Then that wouldn't be an abortion. Of course it is, no different. Madre mía, ¿qué pensan la gente? ¿Qué pensan la gente? All right, uh, we got, let me see. Uh, para ver, para ver, para ver, para ver, para ver. If I need to salute anyone, welcome aboard Maywood. Mike Cisak, welcome aboard. Uh, who else we got here? Da, 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 da. Okay, I think I saluted most of the people here so far. Tom C, welcome aboard. Uh, okay, continuing with Michael Rudnan, Common Dreams. No one single Republican votes for probe of neo-Nazi in U.S. military and police. The amendment to the National Defense Authorization and DA for fiscal year 2023 direct the FBI, uh, Department of Homeland Security, and Department of Defense to publish a report 
uh, that analyzes and set out strategies to combat white supremacists in neo-Nazi activity in the Uniformed Services and Federal Law Enforcement Agency, passing a party enactment. Did I play the um, the the police guys in uh, the police guys inside of San Antonio, not San Antonio, Uvalde yesterday? I don't remember if I did or not. Anyway, the report to be published no more than 180 days after enactment of the NDAA and every six months thereafter would be submitted to congressional committees and unclassified sections <coughs> would be made public. Editor of Progressive Massachusetts, Jonathan Cohn, uh, tweeted, every single Republican in the U.S. House voted against an amendment to require DHS, the FBI and DOD, to publish a report combating white supremacist and neo-Nazi activity in the military and federal law enforcement. Every single Republican, just in case you need Republicans to tell you who they are once again, if you don't believe them the first time, hey, conservatives in the chat, are you proud of this? You're being linked to neo-Nazis. You know, you have the answer to that, Michael. Common dreams, they went to hold women captive. They want to hold women captive. GOP blocks bill protecting rights to travel for abortion. Washington State Patty Murray tweeted, Senate GOP just blocked my bill with Nevada Senator Cortez Masto to, uh, to protect the right to travel, including to get an abortion care. This move shows that they stand with extreme politicians trying to hold women captive in their own states rather than defending the right to travel within our country. They can't stop it. Uh, commerce cannot be blocked by the state. That's a federal thing. Oregon Senator Jeff Markley Reply re tweeted, MAGA Republicans don't read, don't only want to take away women's right to safe and legal abortion. They want to go further and uh, take away the right to travel freely as well. That's outrage on injustice. We need to tweet these stuff over and over again. Thank you for bringing this to our attention, uh, Michael Rudnin, via Common Dreams. I hadn't seen this one, but I think this is important for the midterm as well. We have to show that Republicans are trying to enslave women in their states. In other words, you will be captive. You are pregnant and you try to leave this place. We're going to, you know, what, what do women need to do is leave for good. Unfortunately, that's not realistic. That's not realistic. Okay. Uh, Eric Hayes says, watch. I don't know what you're asking me to watch, Eric. Eric, you have to be. If you take a look at how uh, Michael Rudnan does it, how, uh, uh, you know, even Mike Cisak. Or how um, uh, Bridge MCP does it. When you want me to read something and you provide a link, you at least give us some context. Uh, you know, if, if you care so much about something, come on, put some effort into it. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Greetings from everyone at the Waters. Mike Csac says hi all. How you doing, brother Mike? Uh, Bridge MCP says greetings to Alistair. Nuclear is clean and here to stay. Uh, let's let's. Let's define clean. Nuclear is not clean if its crap gets out. The difference between carbon getting out and nuclear getting out is when nuclear gets out, it pollutes for hundreds of thousands of years. So nuclear should be a last resort. Um, I am not going to come out completely against nuclear, but it should be a, an absolute last resort. And in my opinion, we have enough space in the middle of nowhere to throw a plant up, you know, that's what I would do. In my in my humble opinion, some folks would tell, tell me it's blasphemy to even give nuclear energy a chance, but it's not clean. Uh, likely they will stay the likely they will start the strike September one. What are we talking about? What strike are we talking about? Did I miss something? I uh, did I miss something about a strike somewhere? All right, I must have missed something about a strike. Okay, let's continue. Um, uh, Maywood says, and don't let them forget Eric and Paul. All right. New York City in the 90 degrees, you hit triple digits. Yeah, we hit triple digits. Boy, we did it several days in a row. All right, Eric Hayes is a model for the rest of the states. He has proven fiscally to be relevant. Ron DeSantis is crediting combination of growth tax return and record tourism for the $21.8 billion surplus in the fiscal 2021 Florida state budget. The surplus is the highest in state history and is more than 21% above the state budget for the fiscal year. I mean, California has been running surpluses for quite a while, but those surpluses aren't real, right? I think about what Ron DeSantis had to do to get that surplus, including 
Why isn't that money being used in education when you have an abysmal educational state? Of course not. You show a surplus. Hey, look, I didn't spend your tax dollars to do what is what tax dollars are supposed to do. Invest in people. Invest in roads. Invest in good things. The last time I drove from Tampa, Florida, up the panhandle, across the panhandle, the roads were horrendous. So you have $21 billion in the bank that you're going to probably, the reason you want to show that is you want to give a tax cut to your rich guys in the state when your roads are falling apart and your people are remaining uneducated. Come on, man. That's not something to be proud of. Listen to this. DeSantis said during the eight, June 8 press conference, we've done very well economically. We've outpaced the nation in jobs and labor force. That's not true. DeSantis also credited the state's record tourism with help uh, to fuel Florida's fiscal surplus. A lot of the reasons that we have this surplus is we're cutting taxes. What a stupid statement to say. You're cutting taxes, going to give you a surplus. You know, these guys continue to maintain the, the, the fallacy with the, with the Laffer curve. The Laffer curve has always been proven false. If you don't know about the Laffer curve, look it up. L A. Uh, F-E-R. L-A, I think it's L-A-F-F-E-R. All right. Tom C. Temperature in the 70s today in mid-Michigan. Trying to send colder weather into Texas. Uh, please, we are waiting for it. We're going to send some uh, big tubes and blowers so you can send us that cool weather from Michigan. All right. Bridge MCP says, wow, Mike C. A railroad engineer or conductor typically earns six figures, retires with a pension, and enjoys union benefits. They don't need a college degree. The monitoring training is provided on the job. It's a kind of career that ought to be popular. But Darren said trainees and long-timers alike are getting burned out. It used to be a job with eight or nine-hour shifts and plenty of time at home. Now, Darren says railroading demands too much time away from one's family and work days that last up to 19 hours, combining 12-hour shifts and hours of waiting around for transportation of relief crews. I want to stop there. I want to stop there. This is important. Um, when you see, when you see things like this, you have to realize when I talk about antiseptic slavery, when those jobs used to be humane, you know, I mean, when jobs used to be humane, ah, you know, things look better. But as the plutocracy continues to take a bigger and bigger share of the economy, somebody has to work for it. Somebody has to pay it. And it's not going to be the wealthy owners, stockholders of these corporations. Of course not. So who is it going to be? They constantly ask the truckers, the engineers, all of them, they ask them to do more and more and more and spend more and more time so that DeSantis can say, hey, we got a surplus, so that the wealthy folks can say, look how good we did. Bonuses, so they work the crap out of the worker. The worker gets no bonus. The, uh, the person who says, look at what I did, they didn't do a damn thing. But they're going to get the bonus because that railroad worker, instead of working eight or nine hours, is going to be working 19 hours and sitting around waiting for a replacement. Folks, don't you know when you have been had? And this is, these are the kind of folks, Mike Cisak and Eric Hayes and all these conservatives who've been fooled into believing that there are all these people out there that don't want to work. No, the, the, you're right about there are a lot of people who don't want to work. But those people who don't want to work are those people sitting down in those ivory towers who are telling the trucker, you've got to work more hours, who are telling the, uh, the engineer for the cart, you've got to work some more in order to increase efficiency. And you know what? You are not going to get the spoils from the efficiency. We, the corporate guys who decided, hey, look, we figured out a way how to squeeze 10% more productivity out of that guy. And since we decided that we figured out how to break 10% more productivity, we did a great thing. And we keep the money. We keep the money as bonuses, as capital to buy back stocks. And that engineer is just happy to have a job. Because mentally, 
we have been thought, taught that we are unworthy. Mentally, we have been taught that we are undeserving. Mentally, we are taught that somehow those guys in those towers did something special for me to have the job. When the intellect, when the intellect and all that that corporation creates is all due to you. All due to you. Don't ever sell your worth. And Florida is not a model for the rest of the states. Florida is exactly what we don't want to be. All right, continuing. Um, uh, let's see. Mike says, Bridge, actually, for the strike, the workers are getting screwed on their work schedules. Okay. Eric, why is AOC throwing shade on Capital City Police? Is that what she's doing? I didn't see AOC throwing shade on Capital Police. Prove it. You did, Egberto, but uh, mind putting this one on the screen. Let's see. What is it? Okay, let's put that on the screen for... <laughs> oh, you, you, you terrible... Why isn't it going in here? There we go. All right, I'm putting it on the screen for Brother Rudnan. He told me that he wants you to see this. If there has ever been a more poetic snapshot of a broken institution, I don't know what it is. Trey Crowder, liberal redneck. I love that guy. Check him out. A gun, and he's holding his... Uh, what uh, Rudin, were you able to see what the picture is on the on the screen? He claimed he was trying to reach his wife, but that doesn't seem like what that is. What is it? What was the picture on the screen? I couldn't see. I couldn't see. Is that really that American flag that he's looking? <laughs> if that is what's really on the screen, I have got to be. You've got to be kidding. You have got to be kidding. All right. Let's get busy. Continuing, we have um, Michael Ronan said, if you look at American history, the highway system or wagon trails, it's clear that our nation was built on the idea that our people could freely travel between states. I have no idea what the hell Republicans are doing other than trying to control and oppress women. I don't know what they have against women, including some of their own women. What do you, what could you possibly have against women? It, it behooves me. It behooves me. Eric Hayes says, can't see Rudnan stuff. He blocks people. Well, you know, I wonder why he would have blocked you, uh, man. Uh, let's see. Michael Rudnan says, Eric Hayes, first the source, then a quote from the article or video that you want Egberto to read, followed by a link to a highly factual, accurate rate. Follow that form and then Egberto will read. Exactly. If you bring me something from some right-wing uh, 4chan kind of a stuff, I won't touch it. At all. Punto final. They always have had a bad reputation on the labor front. Exactly. I think you're talking about train folks. Egberto, I'm, no, I'm a pro-nuclear green. I am an outlier among my party. I am too, but uh, with, with caution. There are some new nuclear technologies that make the waste easier to handle, Brother Rudnan. I believe that we need to throw the kitchen sink at global warming, nuclear power, and renewable energy to 100% by 2030, and our civilization collapses... Also, if we're going to if we're going to say okay to nuclear energy, let me tell you what else we need. We need methane and we need the methane and carbon dioxide extractors. Because it's not going to be enough to just go to carbon zero. We have to go to negative carbon, which means rebuilding forests, but also creating these humongous machines all over the world. A uh, nuclear power base, if we find that fuel that if, if you, you know, there, there's a particular fuel, and I way up configuring this stuff, that if you throw a bomb and stuff blow up and it only affects the radius within 10 miles or, or whatever, but, you know, we keep it protected to prevent that from happening, but if by some chance it happens, you know, Fukushima, you, ne you never know. So, yeah, I am with you, Rudnan, but notice how I said it. I said, if we handle the waste problem appropriately. All right, Eric Hayes says, California surplus is from the federal money and spent and regulation and taxes. They still have highest homeless, right? They don't have, look, check, check out Florida's homeless. And not only that, Florida is, a, 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 Rudnan, check this for me. I don't want to I do a scroll right now because sometimes this stuff gets flaky. 
check out the bigger states and see where Florida lands. I know Texas is right on the edge of being a bigger state, meaning they take more from the federal government than they put in. Check Florida for me and see what their number is. Is it plus one, uh, above plus one, or below plus one, or below one? Okay, check it for me. Mike C. Sex says, Egberto, when money is spent, broken systems, it doesn't fix it. It only makes it worse. Actually, this broken system needs a redistribution of money. So I partially agree with you. If we are going to just throw money at this broken system, Brother CSEC, I agree with you wholeheartedly. Our system is broken, and it was broken by the wealthy. And it is high time for us to take back what the wealthy has stolen and redistribute it back to society at large from whence it was stolen. So you and I are in complete agreement, Brother CSEC. Paul Fleming says, Donald Trump's first wife has passed at the age of 73. Ivana, yeah, I heard that. May she rest in peace. I didn't even know she was sick. Hired a guy last week who moved from Detroit. I asked him why. He simply says, for a better life for my children. Yeah, he could have moved. I mean, so he moved to Texas, but he could have moved if he, if he wanted to, like, get out of the city. There are some beautiful towns in Michigan. You know, I've been to a few. I've, I've done uh, retreats on a farm right outside of Detroit. Really nice. And by the way, it's pretty nice. All states have their goods and their bads, you know. Mike Cisek says, the railroads are run by left-wing corporations. I don't know a corporation that is left-wing. Please tell me. Uh, Starbucks was the last one I supported, and, and the president of Starbucks, uh, uh, the chairman of Starbucks, completely disappointed me. What's his name? Gosh, I'm getting old. All right, Eric Hayes, no fooling, uh, so, uh, sorry, fiscal responsibility from our government is what's needed first. You don't know what you're talking about, Eric, but, you know, you, 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 con you, you refuse to learn, so I understand. Uh, Michael Rennes says, the Punisher logo with the U.S. flag. Amazing, isn't it? And that's what he's looking at. Amazing. If you know anything about comic books, I don't. You know that the Punisher would hate corrupt cops and probably go out and punish them. Daniel Lado says it talks like a Marxist and lies like a Marxist. It's a Marxist. Just own it, Egberto. Oh, I still love you, Rodney. You know, you just love that word Marxist. You know, um, Donald Trump likes to project. Everything he projects onto others, it usually turns out that's who he is. Is that what's happening to you, Rodney? Are you a closet Marxist? I mean, not Rodney, not Lado. Brother Lado, are you a closet Marxist? Are those fingers pointing back, Brother Lado? I think they are. I think they are. I always knew there's a reason we had a kinship, brother. All right. Michael Rennes says, oh, yeah, I have no patience for trolls. And continuing, we got, let's see what we got here. Eric Hayes, that's a somebody else. Michael Rennes says, Berta, Florida is number 31 for the screen. Thank you for that. I know I can always count on you, brother, Rodden. Let me go ahead and put that on the screen. All right. All right, look at Connecticut. Connecticut is the one that gives the most money to the federal government per capita, I imagine. Uh, 9, 89 cents they put in. They, uh, rather, they put in a dollar. They only take out 89 cents. Kentucky, where McConnell is from, he puts in a dollar. He takes out 289. Look at the bigger states. Kentucky, Virginia, West Virginia, Mississippi, Arkansas, Florida. So let's get something straight, Mr. Uh, Hayes. Florida is a beggar state. They take more out of the federal government, $1.24 for every dollar they put in. Connecticut, blue. Massachusetts, blue. New York, blue. New Jersey, blue. Minnesota, blue. They all put more into the federal government than they take out. In other words, all those states that you love and you talk about, Brother Hayes, they are welfare states. They take all our monies. Okay? I hope you got that right, brother. And we're, I notice how what Rudnan does. He goes ahead and he gives you all the citations. Source, Rockefeller Institute of Government Analysis of Data from the budget of the U.S. government, fiscal year 2021. So you can't even say that's not a recent document. Hey, Rudnan, thank you so kindly for that. 
you made my day. All right, let's see. We got to go ahead and what time is it? 2.28. Let's go ahead and play. I have, this is a local piece that I'm doing with uh, brother um, Daniel Cohen uh, with respect to Lena Hidalgo and Kim Og. And I want to also let you know that this has implications nationally because Harris County is a bell weather state. I want you guys to check this out and then we'll take it on the other side. Welcome to another edition of Politics Unread. I'm Egberto Willis, your host. And today we have a very special guest, Daniel Cohen, president of Indivisible Houston. I wanted to talk about this feud that's been happening between Lena Hidalgo and uh, District Attorney Kim Og. And the reason I want to bring this up is these are two Democrats. One is a progressive Democrat. One I have I have always had an issue with, even though I've spoken to her a couple of times, but it concerns me. Daniel, welcome to Politics and Right once again. Thank you, Alberto. I appreciate you. What, let's let's do this. Yeah. Well, look, I, there was an article that came out, and, I, and and it came out after I've been thinking about this for some time. And I want you are one of our most trusted advisors here in Houston as an activist with Indivisible Houston. What's your thoughts on the genesis of the feud between? Kim Og and Lena Idal. So a little bit of context too, if I may, right? We we can because we need to go we need to go back actually 2018 for a second, and then I right. promise to talk about this. Lena Hidalgo was the only person who ended up running to be the Democratic candidate for county judge, but that's only because at the last minute, a guy named Mike Nichols, who now is a big Lena Hidalgo supporter, um, who is considering running, decided not to run, citing health reasons. And at the time, actually, I was I was working with the judge. Um, and I haven't worked with very many political candidates over the last few years. In fact, it was her, it was Bill McLeod. Um, but a lot of what's happening recently has brought me back into the fold of it where I'm supporting her and backing her up um, as staff for this next few months because I'm seeing the hijinks and the shenanigans and the nonsense that's going on and seeing that there needs to be extra support because of people like Kim Ock. Well, let me see. I want to get this right. You're saying there's a whole lot of shenanigans and manipulations that you're seeing in this attempt to get this young, vibrant, progressive woman who came into power when nobody else. And in fact, I, I, I think, and, and tell me if I'm right here, but the, too often uh, Emmett, uh, who was the previous judge that she beat, too many darn Democrats were giving him a pass when he did many undemocratic things. Is that correct? Oh, not only is that correct, but the way that the county used to run before Lena Hidalgo was this, was outright corruption. Uh, if you look at the meetings back then, I mean, there was at one point where I, I as an advocate, I brought to the table a ProPublica story that had broken that demonstrated that they had a Harris County hurricane plan that they failed to implement. And I asked them about, I basically read them the news for three minutes. You can find it, wrote an editorial in the Chronicle later about it, and they didn't respond to it at all. But I'll tell you what, they funded the Astrodome to the tune of hundreds of millions, if not more than a billion dollars later that meeting. The mainstream press only covered the Astrodome funding. And I remember they slammed the gavel and we were out of there in 45 minutes to an hour, which is the way the commissioner's court used to run. I mean, you get out of there in an hour, right? You didn't talk about anything. Nobody had any idea of what was going on. One of the reasons that Democrats, former moderate, or that moderate Democrats formerly would back Ed Emmett is because they didn't know any of this stuff was going on. And the reason they didn't know was because Harris County Commissioner's Court was so low profile and therefore lacked any and all transparency. These meetings that last all day long are meetings that show exactly what's going on in Harris County through the morning, through the noon, through afternoon. That's why the meetings are so long. This is easily the most transparent county government that we've ever had in the history of Harris County. Hands down, no questions about it whatsoever. And people don't like that because now you, can, you can't get away with a lot of the stuff. No more smoke filled rooms. That's uh, there's a heck of a lot less of them. That's for sure. And the people in them, um, you know, who used to, the, the people who used to be able to get away with stuff are no longer uh, able to get away with stuff, which is is kind of interesting, given um, kind of some of the discussions from mainstream media surrounding it. But when it comes to Og, specifically when it comes to Og, before um, before you go to Og, because I want to ask sure. a question that I saw in that article. Sure. Uh, is it true? that uh, right in the beginning of Lena Hidalgo's tenure, that uh, 
Og wanted to have some sort of control over her and presented her with, I want you to hire this person. Well, there was definite. So that, you know, that was, that was a lot. That's interesting because that claim, I didn't know as much about actually, but it's pretty well vetted if you look at the article. Um, and because it's pretty well vetted, if you look at the article, you can kind of trace the sources on that. What I'll say is that um, where this, the big split began uh, is that Og pushed for a larger budget. And right, when I remember you, that. And what you, when you're looking at what she's asking for, she's asking for more prosecutors, she's asking for funding. And meanwhile, she's got huge turnover going on in her office. So she can't fill the positions that she has. Um, so it's one of, it became really a political feud over budgets more than anything else. And you can trace some of that back. So you take someone like, you know, a drive-by media guy like Wayne Diltrefino, who Kim Og didn't have a good relationship with. Okay, then all of a sudden, right, Dolcefino starts changing his coverage a little bit. Og gets closer to Crime Stoppers, who, by the way, takes more than a million dollars that of taxpayer dollars, your money and my money, so that they can turn around and run political uh, hit jobs left and right in their commercials and out in the public sphere. And you take something like that, and all of a sudden, Dolcefino and Og are best buddies. So, I mean, there's a lot of different there's there's a lot of things that are very clearly going on that are highly questionable. But it all comes down to to it all comes down to power plays, political hit jobs for budget purposes and for personal power in the county. She doesn't like some of the things she's doing because it gets in the way of her personal agenda. And so Kim Ong doesn't like Lena Hidalgo. And it's that simple. Now, as it turns out, and Lena refuses to give her a hundred and something more uh, uh, district attorneys. I mean, I mean, uh, prosecutors. And what's interesting, right, is uh, it is the it is a sound thing to do. You get a lot more prosecutors. You make less deals to uh, and and bring a whole lot more trials. You bring a whole lot more trials. You get a lot more convictions. You get a lot more convictions. You get more people in jail. You get more people in jail. You're no longer being fiscally responsible with the taxpayer dollars because now you have to fund more jail space. You have to fund more food. You have to fund more education for all these things that could be done outside of the penal system. Am I correct? Of course, it's it's a recipe for mass incarceration. And I'll tell you this, too. It doesn't address crime whatsoever, because what you're doing is you're taking people who theoretically have committed a crime, although a lot of cases we know that the criminal justice system is extremely biased, especially here in Harris County, where we have one of the worst criminal justice histories uh, in the United States. Um, But if you but. Regardless of that, if you take someone who's committed a crime and you've pulled them off the street and you've put them into prison, you're not preventing any crime from happening in the future. You're only focusing on punitive justice for or quote unquote justice, punitive um, retribution related to something that's already happened. So it's all a big smoke and mirrors joke. I mean, it, it's it's nonsense right now. It's obviously political hits. If she could slam her fist on the table and yell about crime and point her fingers at somebody who opposes her political agenda, then she gets to score points off of that. And it, it's based on a house of cards and I hope to see it come toppling down. Now, interestingly, Daniel, uh, it seems to me like Kim Og is playing the right wing ideological moves or, or trying to play right wing ideological moves, both in, in, in the crime with, with crime, with bail bonds. But even further, uh, if we take a look at what what she's starting to represent, it seems like what she is doing is making o- opening the door for others, not necessarily to challenge her. But to challenge other Democrats, Lena Hidalgo being the prime one, but there are some ancillary uh, others that get taken in, the judges, etc., because it gives the impression, the false impression that is, that it is Democrats, that it is progressives who are, who are soft on crime, when the reality is, is that the, the open gun field that we have in Houston right now is a direct rep- uh, result of... In, and you correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems to me the direct result of the laws passed by a Republican Congress in Austin, signed by a Republican governor that threw a whole bunch of guns on the streets of Houston. You get more guns. The, the, the Republicans like to say you get more drugs. More people use drugs. You get more guns. More people use more guns. You're not only are you right, but the dynamics of it and the, the number of angles of it. Um, are, are very easy to trace, right? So you're looking at at Og, like I said earlier, right? Playing buddy-buddy with Dolcefino just after he starts 
covering, uh, you know, starts going after judges. She suddenly is friends with him. They're enemies, and then he goes after judges, and now they're friends all of a sudden. And it's just like that. Then you look at what she's doing with Crime Stoppers, and you see the connections between the people she's connected to and the people who are over on the Alexandra Miller campaign, the Harris County Republican uh, GOP county judge candidate, and you start seeing the connections between that. Meanwhile, Miller is backed by people like Ted Cruz. She's backed by some of some of the most vicious and hateful right-wing flax at the local level. But when she's asked questions, when she's asked questions, which is rare because the media has not started asking her questions about things, but when somebody on Twitter asks her a question about her take on abortion, she doesn't say things one way or another. This, all the problems that are happening right now, right? If you're, you want to talk about crime going up, you look around the country, crime's gone up. Gee, I wonder what could have happened. We have people struggling out on the job market. We had COVID. We had a pandemic that's now entering, I don't know how many waves at this point. It's the most contagious variant that we've ever seen that's now entered it. And to your point, the Republican legislature in Austin has been uh, saddling us with a rickety grid. So we've had uncertainty. They've been cutting education funding. They've been cutting health care funding and they've been blocking health care funding at every single turn. So, yeah, it's no wonder that you're having trouble, but it's really easy for someone to use that for their own political purposes and their own political power, which if is they're exactly- allowed to do it. If If they're allowed to do it. And now my question to you as an activist out there, what are rank and file uh, Democratic and progressive activists doing to ensure that people like Kim Og, who are doing the anti-democratic thing, and not only that, but using the power of her office to intimidate those who she wants to go against? How is that mitigated? Well, I think there's two things that's happening. One, people are changing how they're spending their time and putting more attention on the issue, whether that's in in campaign positions or if that's in volunteer positions or whatever it is. Two, some of the people who are at like, you know, uh, uh, the Houston abolitionist collectives and things like that have been calling out uh, Kim Ogg's pro mass incarceration position, um, you know, more and more often over the last two, three years. I mean, they've made sure to make noise about it. But the other thing is that the electoral people are starting to to hit doors, that they're starting to come out and actually hit doors um, and, and start looking at this. And there's more and more conversations about it. People are tired of Kim Ogg inside of the Democratic Party, particularly inside of the rank and file Democratic Party. Uh, and she's going to hear about that. She'll hear about that in, a, in the next primary. But in the meantime, uh, I think that there's a lot of discussion Uh, in the general activist atmosphere about what's going on. And conversations like the one you and I are having are becoming more and more common. And uh, last question, and this has to do with where these types of campaignings are occurring, because we know that the people that are always used when a politician needs to score a point, the ones that always get used are people of color and poor white folk, because they have no other avenue. So therefore, are we concentrating in these areas of Houston? Uh, let's say Latino districts, let's say black districts, let's say uh, poor white districts, etc., to ensure that the wrath that uh, Kim Ag needs to bring on to the people to give her bona fides to Republicans, that they are not that that they are made aware of this and start fighting for what they have to fight for to ensure that it is it isn't successful. I think that the conversations are definitely happening all over Harris County right now, um, but. Grassroots activists should, and, and all activists should hear what you just said as much as possible. That that should be honestly the, the most common, one of the most common refrains that people hear, especially on the canvassing side and on the outreach side, um, because Harris County is 60% um, black and brown population and no, no population is a monolith. So we have to be having conversations all over Harris County. We also need to be um, acknowledging the fact that this is an area the size of Connecticut. It's one of the largest counties in the entire country and it's almost a state unto itself. And it's a state that's repressed by an even larger state the size of France. So when, when you look at it, I mean, look at what's going on right now. When you look at things like the grid, Harris County doesn't have its own grid. That's the state of Texas making bad decisions that come down on the backs of people in our hometown. And we need to be having conversations about things like that. We also need to be having that conversation about Kim Og and the mass incarceration agenda that she pushes. Final thoughts. I want to stress this as much as I can is that, again, something that hasn't been talked about is the Harris County GOP is running an extremist who's charrotting as a, as a, uh, a moderate 
um, for Harris County judge. And Kim Ogg is in basically in de facto in league uh, with that candidate right now. And people need to be paying attention to what's going on, because just like we've seen at the state level and the federal level, it is possible for us to turn back the clock here in Harris County instead of continuing to move forward and make progress. So all of the things that you've talked about, extremely important. And as always, thank you for being a member of the free and independent media, Egberto. I appreciate you. Thank you so kindly. Daniel Cohen, president of Indivisible Houston and one of the major activists, not only in Houston, but around the country. Thank you so kindly for what you continuously bring to our body politic. Thank you, Egberto. We spend, yep, we got a lot of work to do, and we are doing all that work, folks. Uh, let me do my ass before I go back into the fold. Politics done right depends on you to keep doing what we do. What do we do? We make sure to keep, number one, the internet seeded with blogs and information to counter the right and to present what progressives represent for the be- benefit of us all to everybody so that it's not misread, misled by any other entity. We make sure and populate that internet with blogs, with videos, with all these other things to make sure that we are informed and to counter everything that you normally hear that that are lying at the right. We also make sure to create articles in, in magazines, articles in newspapers all around the country to ensure, again, that our message gets out there. Last but not least, we also write books. As you see it, Class Warfare, the only resort to right-wing doom, How to Make America Utopia, are two of the many books that I've written on these issues. So please support us in one of many ways. Numero uno, you can support us at PayPal, either one time or monthly. Go to politicsdoneright.com slash PayPal. You can support us on Patreon. That is politicsdoneright.com slash Patreon. Patreon is spelled P-A-T-R-E-O-N. You can support us by becoming a part of our YouTube channel, going to politicsdoneright.com slash YouTube, or you can support us in many other forms that you can find at politicsdoneright.com slash support. Be sure to visit our store, politicsdoneright.com slash store and get our books at politicsdoneright.com slash books. Hey, uh, Bridge, it seems like uh, the bot is not working on Facebook because you're correct. When I'm sending messages, all the messages that I send, they're all going to the other, they're, they're going to everywhere except the YouTube page. So you are correct that there is a bug in the bot that I'm trying to uh, figure out right now. And that's not my, just just for the audience, that bot, uh, I, you know, we pay for that bot so that that bot is supposed to do its job. Why the bot isn't doing its job today that's transferring stuff to Facebook and from Facebook, I can't answer that. But let me just put inside of the get, here is the link to support us. Uh, I'm putting this one now inside of uh, directly inside of um, YouTube, which I never have to do. But that is the link to support us at PayPal, and here is the link to support our the net roots uh, the net roots trip that I'm taking to Pittsburgh. Here we go. And lastly, uh, lastly, uh, here is the link to our store. And by the way, folks. Um, the store has a, a new hat in there. At the end of the show, I'm going to show you the new hat that we just put together. But anyhow, let me get back to answering you beautiful people. All right, let's go back up top. Uh, Paul Femme says, a man you hate the most balanced the nation's budget. Clinton, it's amazing. That's the only president in these times that have ever balanced the budget. And immediately after he balanced the budget, when the Republicans said, They gave not one vote. They didn't give even one vote for that. I wrote about that in my book, As I See It, Class Warfare, The Only Resort to Right-Wing Doom. I have a chapter called The Presidents. Uh, Let's see what that chapter is called. It's important. When I wrote this book, I I, I, I detailed all of that that you mentioned about the the, the thing there. I called it, uh, that chapter was called The Presidents. Voodoo economics, genesis of the demise. Then voodoo economics reverse. That's what Clinton did. The return of fiscal responsibility, fiscal insanity revisited and expanded, and the return of sanity. Each one of those corresponded to a particular president. 
And that's in my book, As I See It, Class Warfare, The Unresort to Right Wing Book. And the only one that balanced the budget, yes, was Bill Clinton. And they like to make a fool out of Bill Clinton. But he's the only one that said, I'm going to balance the budget and did it, right? Okay, what else have I got here? Berta Willis, restream not working. Oh, I see the message you're sending me. I see the message you're sending me. Ah, uh, para ver, para ver. Daniel Ledo says, apparently I'm a, clo- I'm a closet Marxist. At least I have the decency to keep my Marxist shame in the closet. Egberto is out and proud. Yes, I am, but I'm, whatever. Okay, continuing with your statement. Uh, Lado says, Eric Hayes says, Dan is buddy buddy with Hidalgo. Okay, so uh, did it, did he did anything that he say was untrue? I don't think so. All right, Daniel Lado says, Egberto, what is uni- what is universal advocacy? Tell me, please enlighten me. I love to learn. Lee Grant says, wasn't it an indivisible Houston guy who got up in Ted Cruz's face in a Houston sushi restaurant? Yeah, our other buddy. Uh, he did that uh, about a month ago. I got it on video. And, you know, we, we made a hell of a lot of hay out of that one to show who Mr. Cruz really is, an evil man. Michael Rudnan says, poverty is the leading cause of crime. You want to reduce crime rates, improve social safety net, and promote investment. Agreed? Uh, Michael says, reminder, 61% of Americans are so poor that they cannot pay federal income tax. Egberto, yep, the formula for poverty, weapons equal violent crime. Eric says, low bond or no bond via judges have led to over 170 deaths. Let me ask you, uh, you you like to use those numbers, Eric. When am I going to see that Republicans' refusal to give Medicaid expansion for the Affordable Care Act, even though the money is there and we are paying for it, but they refuse to give Texans the Medicaid expansion to the Affordable Care Act. Now there are over 2,178 Texans dead. Are you going to ever put that up there? You think 170 is a big deal. I think it is, right? But an even bigger deal by orders of magnitude, more than 10 times that many are dead because of direct Republican policy. And think about all the people that are getting shot up on Houston streets because now the the Republican Congress has allowed 18 years old to get a gun without a check. They just get a gun. They don't even need to practice or anything. No insurance, nada, 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 nada. So it shows, Eric, the hypocrisy, my brother. Love you, but... That the hypocrisy of you showing a false concern for 170 dead that you said is caused by a judge letting out somebody on bond. Remember, the the judge didn't do anything wrong. The judge followed the law. So you, but those who are killing the 2,178 people who lack insurance, the Republicans are creating the law that's killing them. You see the difference? The judges are following the law. And in following the law that was created by Republicans in Congress, 170 people have died, according to you. But Republicans who make the law have created the law that has been causing the deaths of thousands of Texans. But you don't say anything about that. Ah. Your hypocrisy is deadly. Your hypocrisy, my brother, is deadly. Eric Hayes, Egberto, you can't do anything about Og Hidalgo except vote. No, I can do something. And we are going to do something. Uh, Og, Og would do right. Og, Og would do right by stepping back from doing anything illegal. Og would do right. By not using the power of her office, she would do right by not using her power, the power of her office for political gain. Because while it may work in the first few days, in the first few weeks, in the first few months, what you ha- would have unleashed or what you will unleash could actually be for your political career irreversible. Irreversible. Okay, um, let's see. Chat UGH 
have, uh, so I mean, T's and I's better be crossed. Because we do not, t we, we, can, we cannot allow politicians to use the power of the state. Again, I, I want to make this clear. Any day you allow a politician to use the power of the state on their political enemies or folks that they want to do things that they didn't get done. If you ever do that, and we prove it, your political career is over. Um, continuing. And that is for any politician, right? For any politician. Any politician. That applies to, but specifically politicians that good people decide they will be supporting. Okay, let's see what else we got here. Bridge MCP says, love that. Let me see what Bridge loves. Uh, oh, she brought me the hat. Okay, folks, that is our new Politics Done Right cap. I just ordered one so I can wear it on the show. And I ordered Bridge's t-shirt because I want to wear that with that hat on the show. So I, I don't know when it's coming in. I hope it comes in in the next week or so. Our new parafarnalia. But you can, get, you can get that at our store right now. Thank you for... Hey, Bridge, I love you, girl. You went ahead and got it printed out for me. I appreciate you. I really appreciate you. All right, let's see. Eric Hayes says, look, you put that one in there already. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Let's see. I don't know what Eric is trying to say. Daniel says... Apparently, Egberto doesn't even know the word salad he says he supports. Hmm. Wow. Okay. Uh, let's see. Hidalgo is the one in trouble legally, not Og. Hidalgo is not in trouble. For you to be in trouble, you have to have a legal cause. We are talking. Uh, let me tell you how, how, bad, how bad it is. Uh, what the district attorney is now doing is subpoenaing online cloud records in Google. So she is forcing Google to release records not used by Hidalgo because that is done by Hidalgo staff. Okay? You don't get it. Uh, you don't get it, brother. You know, maybe you need to learn a little bit of IT, brother. Ask, ask Breach. Breach is a pro. Ask Breach to school you. We support a completely activated citizenry. Universal advocacy, engagement, and knowledge of the people and processes in our communities and our government. Our chief job is as supportive Calvary, focused locally on elected officials for defensive purposes. However, since defense and offense are not clearly separated in politics, that can also mean engaging in proactive campaigns and working to remove politicians from office. Breach! You got it, girl. Where did that come from, though? Help me out. Help me out. Help me out. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Um, Mike Cisek says, I also have a 99 to 1 bet come July 20th. When GDP comes out, we'll officially be in recession, having two quarters in negative growth. And you know what's interesting? I, I'm going to tell you guys something. I love people that are tr talking up a recession right now. I love it. People talking up. A recession right now. But here is the kicker, people. Here is the kicker. You're talking about a recession with a, an employment rate of 3.6%. You're talking about a recession of us creating 3.6 million jobs. Or not 3.6. Uh, 240, 200, 340 something or 360 something thousand jobs in the last month. Recession? Yeah, you guys can try to talk us into a recession. Let me tell you what I'm upset about. Inflation is horrendous, 9%. But it's a direct responsibility of the corporatocracy because they have price and power. My goal is, going forward, to try to start creating the movement to nationalize not only healthcare, but nationalize the oil industry and put the, uh, put the correct the correct narrative on it instead of the false narrative that we see from the plutocracy who rips all Americans off dry. Numero uno. Because had we had 
nationalize health care, nationalize uh, energy, and leave the Pizza Hut and the grocery store and all of that into the private sector. Bifurcated economy. We wouldn't be worried about inflation because you know why? Because certain parts of the economy are not in the private sector. When the private sector misbehaves, we just say, we don't worry about that because gasoline is going to be the price that gasoline needs to be at. We're not going to allow those thugs to enrich themselves by stealing our money. Now, Ledo calls me a Marxist for wanting to be fair. So he doesn't mind when they rip you off. Egberto, what do you think of Jill's taco gate? Slip of the tongue. I think what she did was, you know, here's, here's the thing, right? Uh, here's the thing about it uh, that, that gets me. Um, uh, it really gets hey, By the way, uh, there's, a, there's, a, um, there's a troll that needs to be get rid of. I think the troll's name is Sofia Vergera. Um, anyhow, check this out. Um, Jill needs to cool it. She don't, she don't need to say those things. Look, when, uh, when Bridge MCP says certain things about beer and all of that, because she's Irish and all of that, I don't try to push myself as somehow being Irish and knowing a lot about Irish culture or anything like that. I don't need to do that for Bridge to respect me or Bridge doesn't have to know about my Latino Caribbean heritage. She just knows me as a human being and I know her as a human being, uh, whose culture I love, I love everybody's culture. Uh, my German folks, my, my French folk, my Italian folk, you know, and you know what? You adopt what you want, but you don't throw yourself into it to, what's the word again uh, that you use? A pen, not, um, a pe not a piece. Uh, you know, you don't, want, you, you don't want to do certain things. I believe, however, what you have to do is just in, 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 involve yourself in all these cultures and enjoy them. So I go for all the different things in culture, but I'm not going to try to expropriate, not expropriate, because I, you know, I, I differ from a lot of people. I like when people exp expropriate my culture. I have a strange culture, right? It's a mixture of a hell of a lot of stuff because of Panamanian heritage, Caribbean heritage, Latino heritage, all that good stuff all together. So, yeah. Um, anyhow, 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 anyhow. We are coming to, actually, we were at the end of the program. I didn't realize that. You support universal advocacy, Egberto. So what is it? I don't know. What do you want me to say? Universal advocacy. Huh? Come on now. Nationalized toilet paper. Well, if the toilet paper industry starts to Tell you we're going to charge you $100 for a roll of toilet paper. Yeah. You know. So uh, what I'm saying is this. There has to be a balance. And you cannot allow the private sector, which comprises a small number of people who gets the right to, pit, to, to have a business in society. When I had a business in society, and I told you guys that story about charging $10,000 for a license. And wow, Boeing had no problem paying for that license. And then the, the crazy in me sits back and said, damn, the person who paid for that wasn't Boeing. We always pilfer the lower classes. You know, um, I got to get out of here. I got to get out of here. I got to get out of here. Um, my name is Egberto Willis. Please remember to go to politicsandright.com slash store. To get all of our new stuff, it's very important to keep helping us, uh, you know, doing what we do. So go to politicsandright.com slash, uh, slash store. We have new hats and all that good stuff in there. Please, as well, go to um, politicsandright.com slash netroots to support my trip to Pittsburgh. By the way, I'm heading to New York sometime the first week of August. Some part of New York I don't know about. Bridge... Uh, I think I sent you the, I told you the name of the town, etc. But please support that, that GoFundMe at Netroots as well as our store. We cannot do this without you. And here, because courtesy of Bridge helping me out, here is the new hat that we have 
in the store. And hopefully soon you'll see me wearing it on the show. My name is Egberto Willies. This is Politics Done Right. And you guys know how I end this, baby. I am what? Out. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.